It is time for episode two of the Detroit Red Wings franchise mode. All that's left to do is to sim up to the playoffs. If you haven't checked out episode one, go and do so right now. So we ended the season on a six game winning streak. You love to see that. So here's a look at the standings and the trade deadline acquisitions appear to have worked out as the Detroit Red Wings are your Atlantic division champions with 102 points, 49 wins, Second place was the Toronto Maple Leafs with 97, Boston 95, Tampa 90, Ottawa squeaks in with 88, Montreal who was in first for a good chunk of the season finishes in last with 85, and Florida missed two. Let's look at the whole NHL now. And the President Trophy winners are the Colorado Avalanche with 105 points, tied with Carolina and Winnipeg though. Anaheim somehow finishes with 104. Philadelphia somehow finishes with 103. And we're in sixth in the entire league. That's really, really good for this first year. 102 points for the Detroit Red Wings. Let's scroll down. The San Jose Sharks make it. Let's see who missed. Florida was the best team to miss. The New York Rangers miss. Dallas gets in with only 85 points. Washington misses. LA misses. Who's getting Connor Bedard? Cracking on second to last. Last place is the Chicago Blackhawks to absolutely nobody's surprise. That team is atrocious. The New Jersey Devils would be my prediction to win the draft lottery because they have, them and Edmonton have the best draft lottery luck and Edmonton's a playoff team. Now looking at points, David Perron has ended up leading the team in points. 33 goals and 49 assists for 82 points, exactly one point per game. Larkin with 81 is great. Raymond is 75. Let's see, did he grow at all? Went up to an 85. We'll take that. Joe Pavelski with 72 points in 83 games. Let's see what he did for us. 23 points in 21 games with a plus 10 rating. That's very solid. Bertuzzi 67. Verona with 58. Cop 55. Fabry 54. Dumbo with 42. I want to see how he did with us as well. 13 points in 21 games. Very good for a defenseman. Kubalik with 38, Hironik 36. Hironik and Cider tight, so I definitely want Cider to be a 50 plus point guy. Still an 87. It's a little bit disappointing, but that's because my expectations are really high. It's still a really solid season from Mo. Zadina, let's see if Zadina grew at all. 33 points. He went up to an 84. He grew more than Raymond and Cider, even though Raymond and Cider had better seasons. Felino, another trade deadline acquisition. How did he do with us? 10 points in 21 games on the third line. Plus five rating, I'll take that all day. Elmer Soderblom with 31 points in his rookie year. Went up to an 81 overall. Nadelkovic is going to be the starter for the playoffs. The 908 save percentage with 29 wins. Husso had a rough year, an 888 save percentage. He might be someone we look to move in the off season because that's pretty bad. Now let's look at the whole league. Freddie Anderson and Connor Hellebuck tied with wins. John Gibson, Capo Kakinen for San Jose. How good did he get? He's an 85 overall now, wow. Igor Shesterkin, 34 wins. Let's look at save percentage. So for Quick was a backup with 922, but for actual starters, I think I think the Vezina is gonna go to the redhead Freddie Anderson with that 918 save percentage. Jake Allen was really good. Jack Campbell was pretty good for the oil. Now let's look at, we're going to look at rookie skaters first. Who's winning the call there? Shane Wright, 41 points in 82 games. I think it's going to go to Owen Power though. 38 points as a defenseman. It would make a lot of sense. Shane Wright, still only a 78, didn't grow. 83 overall for Power, that's really good. Slavkovsky, just an 80. Alexander Carrier, who's not actually a rookie and is counted as a rookie, has a good year, so he could be up to first two. There's Soderblom in fifth in points, so that's pretty solid. And Mitch Marner leads the league in points with 109. Matthews right behind in 106, so those two just went off. Nylander's up there with 94 as well. Nazem Kadri, look at that, 92 points, proving his last season was not a fluke. Giroux comes home to Ottawa and lights it up. Krejci returns from Czechia and lights it up. Stamkos with 91. Kane. Let's see where Perron. Perron's way down here. Where is... Oh, Connor McDay was up there with 87. Let's see who leads the league in goals. No surprise there. Austin Matthews with 55. Ovi right behind in 52. And then a bunch of other guys with 40, including James Van Riemsdyk. 
The assist leader is Mitch Marner with David Krejci in second. Nick Suzuki with 69, nice. Kale McCarr and Roman Yossi both up there. Drew Daddy and Victor Hedman as well. Let's look at defensemen, let's look at defensemen. Drew Daddy 76, Kale McCarr 76, either one of them could be taking home the Norse. Neil Pionk with 63 is definitely a surprise. Sam Gerrard 61 right up there too. All right, it's time for the moment everybody's been waiting for. Who are we playing in the playoffs? The Tampa Bay Lightning. Who, who, ironically, we played just two days ago and won three to two. Let's go look at their lines now. They have a top line of Hagel, Stamkos, Kucherov. Line two is Kaloran, Point, and Perry. Line three, Nemesnikov, former Red Wings, Sorelli, and Colton. Line four, Belmare, Nick, Paul, and Pat Maroon. So that's a really good offense which is exactly what you would expect from the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back Eastern Conference champions and two-time Stanley Cup champions. The defense is also very solid. Hedman leading the pack with a 93 overall. Sergeyev at an 86, and their third pairings are both 80s. And then in goal, we have to face the beast that is Andre Vasilevsky. This is not the first-round matchup that I was hoping for. Here we are in the simulation. First period, it is 2-1. Tampa Bay, second period, 3-2 to two, Tampa Bay. We're going to need a comeback right here, and we do not get it. Tampa pulls off the upset in game one. Here we go for game two. We, we really need a win. If you go down 2 to nothing against Tampa, you're probably done. one nothing, Joe Pavelski. We keep the lead, 2-1. to one. Sorelli gets one on Nadelkovic, but Bertuzzi gets one more past Vasilevsky. Come on, let's hold on. Oh, that's actually really, really bad. Ross Colton and Nikita Kucherov and the Lightning come back. A third period choke from the Red Wings. This is not looking good. It's game three. We desperately need the win. I did not change the lines because they've been competitive hockey games. Let's see at the end of the first. one nothing Tampa Bay. At the end of the second, it is still one nothing Tampa Bay. Come on, boys. We need a goal. Let's just tie it up and send it to OT. And it's going to overtime. Tyler Bertuzzi gets a power play goal on Andre Vasilevsky. First overtime sim. Here we go. Oh, Braden Point. Of course it's Braden Point. Wins it for Tampa. And we are on the brink of elimination. We've lost three one-goal games in a row. That, abs that is absolutely terrible. And I'm going to have to change the lines now because something has to give. All right, we got Bertuzzi, Larkin, and Raymond back together on the top line. Peron, Pavelski, Zadina on line two. Fabry, Kopp, Felino line three. And Verona, Soderblom, Kubelik line four. The defense, we've got Sherat, Sider back together. Dumba, Hronik on that second pair. And Pisic and Mata have been playing well on that third pair, so they stay together. All right, I'm going to enter the sim from the main menu instead this time, which is not what I've been doing. So hopefully that gives us some better luck. We need someone other than Larkin to step it up right here. And it's 2 to 1, Raymond and Bertuzzi. Nemesnikov has been playing really well. 24 shots to 6, though. The boys do not want to go home yet. We keep it up 33 shots to 18. We're slow simming this third period. We can't get swept. We want to at least, you gotta at least win one and then go from there. Getting swept after winning the division is embarrassment. We do not score on that power play, which really is not good. 40 shots, only two goals. Dominic Kubelik, let's go. Three to one. All we gotta do is keep it in their zone. We're gonna win. One minute left, five seconds, it's over. We're making a comeback, that's one. We need three more. Of course, every game from now on, I am simming from the main menu. Period one. one nothing lead for Detroit. Andrew Kopp gets on the board. Very nice. And we've got a 2 nothing lead. David Perron finally doing something. He did not do anything for the first few games. Power play goal. Let's slow sim it again for this third period. Let's hold on to this lead. They say the two-goal lead is the worst one in hockey. Stamkos gets one back. Come on, boys. 10 minutes remaining. We have a power play. This would be big, but we do not score on the power play. Five minutes remaining. Can we hold it? No, we can't. Nikita Kucherov breaking hearts. We're going to overtime. Tampa's got the momentum. What's going to happen here? Can we hold on? 
No, we cannot hold on. Mikhail Sergachev wins it for Tampa, and the Detroit Red Wings are out in just five games. And the Winnipeg Jets are Stanley Cup champions, and their AHL affiliate, the Manitoba Moose, are also champions. What a year for that franchise. Now to look at our player stats, Larkin and Raymond both came to play with 4.5 games. Bertuzzi had three goals. Mata had three assists, but was a minus three, so that's not too good. Reality, we got shut down by Vasilevsky, and we just didn't have enough offense to win. We've got a lot of minuses on our team. We just didn't have what it took. Nadelkovic was actually great. 920 save percentage with a 2.39 goals allowed average in five games. When your goalie's putting up those numbers and you only get one win, you just didn't deserve to move on. Connor Hellebuck was great in the playoffs. 908 is really good with high sim on. But Jay Gottinger, he's just an absolute animal. He's an absolute animal in the playoffs. 919 save percentage. Markstrom with a 922 rebounding after last year's pathetic performance against the Edmonton Oilers. Let's see who led in points. Connor McDavid in only 17 games with 27. Sebastian Ajo with 26. Kyle Connor likely won the Conn Smythe in with 25 points. Shifley with 23. Ehlers with 22. The top line in Winnipeg really carried them. Here's what the playoff tree looked like. Winnipeg defeated Carolina in the Stanley Cup final with a sweep. Edmonton lost in the conference final again, but also beat Calgary again. The Avalanche failed miserably in their cup defense, losing in the first round against Dallas. Boston ended up beating Toronto in seven because of course they beat Toronto in seven. Carolina barely beat Pittsburgh and then barely beat Boston and then got absolutely destroyed in the final. To look at awards, of course, Winnipeg wins the Stanley Cup, President's Trophy to the Avalanche. That's why they lost the curse of the President's Trophy. The Clarence is Campbell to Winnipeg and the Prince of Wales to Carolina. Mitch Marner wins the Art Ross. But Austin Matthews gets back-to-back -back heart trophies. Very impressive stuff from the man with the mustache. Kale McCarr, back-to-back -back Norris's. Very impressive stuff from the guy who has a voice way deeper than you would ever expect. Mitch Marner wins the Lady Bing. Owen Power did win the Calder, so a defenseman wins the Calder once again. Kyle Connor did get the Conn Smythe, like I predicted, probably 30 seconds ago. Freddie Anderson did win the Vesna and the William M. Jennings. Alex Edler with the Bill Masterton. The Jack Adams went to the Sharks coach. The Sharks made the playoffs, which was very unexpected. They are not going to make it in real life with David Quinn as their coach. They are going to go nowhere with David Quinn as their coach. Barkov wins the Selkie. Ted Lindsay to Marner. Maurice Richard Matthews, soon it'll be named the Ovechkin Award, and then Matthews is going to be the goal scorer king after that, and then it'll be, then it'll be the Matthews Award. The draft lottery results are in, and Chicago will be getting Connor Bedard. LA is going to build the juggernaut with that second overall pick. They'll get Michkov, and Montreal gets incredibly lucky and will be able to select Adam Fantilli. Seattle dropped from 2 to 4. I was wrong on my New Jersey prediction. They dropped from 3 to 5. Arizona gets screwed over by the draft lottery like always. We're going to view the retired players. Joe Thornton never got signed. Calls up quits. Shea Weber. Val Thierry Philpola. Brian Little. Franz Nielsen. Brett Seabrook. People you'd all expect. Any goalies. Mike Smith calls it quits. Playing for Bakersfield. Ben Bishop. And the legend of Jeff Glass. Jordy Ben and Shea Weber are now scouts. So in the next episode, I will be doing the entire offseason. Maybe I'll start the regular season. Who knows? I don't. Thanks so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and leave any suggestions down below.